questions. You're here because you want to quit smoking. I'm going to help you with that. I'm not going to guarantee anything because it's in your hands. But I'm going to give you the same talk that I've given countless times to my clients, my patients, my friends, family. It's some simple words of advice that I think you'll remember. It'll stick with you. You'll love me for it, and you'll be annoyed with it too because you won't be able to forget it. I've given this chat to many people who have struggled with smoking for different reasons. They're ready to quit. Typically, they're older. They're in their 40s, 50s. They're going blind. Sometimes they're not quite going blind, but they're on the verge of it. Diseases like glaucoma macular degeneration in particular are especially worsened by smoking. Smoking, the products in the smoke, deteriorate the quality of physiological functioning in your eye. It affects blood flow. It affects how your eyes can use energy, but also take care of the waste products from using that energy. The eyes are very, very busy creating sight for you. They use perhaps more energy per unit of mass than any other tissue in your body. That said, sadly, too often people, when they come to see me, and they're going blind, or they're losing their sight slowly, and we have the talk about smoking, it's sometimes too late for them. In many cases, people want to quit before things become problematic. For yourself, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your current situation is. It doesn't matter what your religion is, your political beliefs, what you do for a living, how much money you have in your pockets. You're here because you want to quit. I'm going to help you achieve that. Everybody starts the same when they learn to smoke. And you'll remember this for yourself. Usually we start when you're young. We succumb to advertising, peer pressure, family pressure, social pressure, emotional distress. We find that it's a way out for some reason. We get that satisfaction, that quick hit. We learn to achieve that anyway. And then it becomes a part of who we are. It becomes a part of our daily routine. Every minute of the day, you're calculating when you're next going to have a cigarette. You know I'm right. You know I'm telling the truth. From the morning to the, to the nighttime when you go to bed, and you're thinking about it, when I get up in the morning, I'm lining up the activities in my mind that will lead to me eventually having that cigarette. It's hard to quit. Partly it's hard to quit because we're addicted, because the chemistry is highly addicting, but because also there's a behavioral component to this. The cycle of smoking comes with a pattern, a motor behavioral pattern that is predictable and that is implanted in our brains. That comes from somewhere. It comes from when we were young and we succumbed to that peer pressure and the advertising pressure and the, and the demonstrations that we saw in the great movies that we saw when we were kids. But we learned to smoke, and we started young, and I started when I was 11. And when I, when I started smoking, I found that it was horrifying, like you all did. And so I switched to something called more cigarettes. And some of you know what these are. They're long, slender, very mild cigarettes. Call them trainer cigarettes. We used to call them lady cigarettes or girl cigarettes. But they were very mild, and you could learn to smoke on them. And then the next thing you know, you're graduating up to something more significant. Typical little blunt cigarettes, or God forbid, king-size cigarettes. And there were different varieties of them, different concentrations of, of nicotine, lights and extra lights and so forth. And it didn't make a damn bit of difference, because it was all equally as addicting, and the readings on the packages made no bit of difference whatsoever. Because so long as you were smoking, you were killing yourself, and eventually you would damage your vision. And you can look up macular degeneration, and we'll put some images up of what this means. But we won't dwell on that. We're going to dwell on helping you learn to not smoke. At some point, when you were young, you learned to smoke. You took those steps, those trainer steps with the light cigarettes, maybe. Maybe they were flavored, maybe they were menthol, something like that. Nowadays, we have all kinds of flavors. It's criminal, frankly. When we learned to smoke, it was gross, distasteful, unpleasant. 
We did it in hiding initially, and then later on, it was more public perhaps. It was more acceptable when I was a teenager. But we would smoke in public, even in airplanes. But you develop that habit over time, and you force yourself to do it initially because it's disgusting. But you learn that the more you do it, the more you come to want it, the more you put up with the negative side effects, the dizziness, the confused thinking. Okay, maybe the nausea, the smell, the cost. You can learn to put up with it because now you're addicted. The trick to not smoking later on now at this point in your life is not to quit smoking, but is to learn to not smoke. I'm going to teach you how. Because all these patterns are established in your mind, and in your habits, it's a very predictable, satisfying thing to do, to follow through and to reach for a cigarette. And so when people are done in my clinic, I've told them all kinds of news, maybe they are going blind, or maybe they just don't like seeing doctors, but typically it's a combination of factors. When they leave the clinic, they wanna have a cigarette. I understand that. And so let's look at that situation. We're talking to you, looking at me, let's assume that you want to have a cigarette. Well, let's go through this and explore the motor patterns that have been, or the motor patterns that have become part of your life, okay? You know your, where your cigarettes are in your pockets. You know where your lighter is. This will be my cigarette. You know where everything is. Instantaneously, when I say, let's have a smoke, you're going to know, oh, my smokes are here, my lighter is here, wherever it is. You can immediately go to it and 15 seconds later, you'll be set up. You'll have that cigarette in your hand. You'll have the lighter ready. And this is what I'm gonna tell you to do. If you wanna quit smoking, if you wanna to learn to not smoke, at the very least reduce the amount you smoke, you're gonna trust yourself that you're a smart person, that you have some willpower, and you can do the following very simple trick. You're gonna take that cigarette out of the package you're going to go as far as putting it into your mouth, and you're going to light up your lighter, and you're going to hold it, and you're going to sit there for three seconds, four seconds, five seconds if you have to. And then you're going to put it all away. Put it back to where it came from. Look at your watch and tell yourself, 10 minutes from now, I'm going to have that cigarette. Now you can relax. You're going to have your cigarette. You're the winner. You get to have your cigarette. But you're going to put it off for 10 minutes, and in doing so, you're going to start to break that cycle that you've developed over time. That cycle that nicotine addiction is now driving in you, you're going to start to break that one step at a time. And it doesn't take long. 10 to 15 minutes is all you need to break that addiction. You're going to go up to light your cigarette. You're going to calmly put it all away. Look at your watch, and in 10 minutes, you're going to have that cigarette. It doesn't matter if you want it or not. Almost, especially if you don't want to have it, I want you to have that cigarette. You're going to find that it doesn't taste nearly so satisfying. You may not even want to finish it, but I want you to finish it. The next time you want a cigarette, it may be a little longer than the normal cycle now. That's okay. Same trick. You're going to reach into your pocket, pull out your tools, put the cigarette in your mouth. Don't skip this step. Put the cigarette in your mouth, go to light it up. Don't light it. Look at it. Put it in your pockets. Put it away. Look at your watch. Ten minutes later, you're going to repeat the cycle for the first day. Each time you want to have a cigarette, you're going to delay the cycle by ten minutes. This is easy. You're going to still be smoking. You won't die. The next day, you're going to repeat this. As soon as you get up, that coffee and cigarette in the morning, you're going to put it off 10 minutes, but you need to put that cigarette in your mouth to start. Put it off. I'm sorry, I said 10 minutes, but make it 15 minutes. Day one, 10 minute delays. Day two, 15 minute delays. I'll let you guess what you do on day three. 20 minute delays. Make sure that by the end of 20 minutes, you're having your cigarette on the third day. You're not going to like it. You're going to start to feel like you can do this, like you're regaining control. 
eventually you're going to be down to a few cigarettes daily. The first day, the very first day that you try this, you will already drop a couple of cigarettes from your regular diet. I want you to think about that. It's empowering to know that you can regain control of this just by stalling the next cigarette. I want you to think about it. There's not much more to say on this, but if you're interested in quitting, this is a way that you can, at the very least, learn to not smoke. Just as an aside before I let you go, vision is precious. Protect your vision. Eat well. Get some rest. Let me talk about eating well. Vegetables, primarily, okay? If you want to know what you can do for your vision, eat vegetables. If it grows out of the ground and it has color, that's what you should be reaching for in the market. Avoid the carbs. Very quickly on that, my simple rule, especially for diabetics, if it's white, don't bite. So sugar, flour, rice, corn. Avoid it. You don't need so much of it. Let's include potato in that, so fries, all right? A little bit, that's cool, but vegetables. And remember, a 10 minute delay on day one is all you need. Once you learn this habit, you can't forget it. You'll be annoyed at me that you can't forget it. And maybe just one day you'll thank me for it. That's all I have. Good luck.